All right, hey, what's up guys? Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. In this FL Studio tutorial, you guys will be learning how to delete from the mixer as well as how to reset a mixer track. And I'll throw in a couple little bonuses for you guys to understand how to use the mixer a little bit better. Before getting into the video, if you guys would like to learn FL Studio, check out my free book called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. So simple it becomes creative. Get it by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. All right, let me just show you how to quickly reset your mixer tracks, but I would highly suggest watching the rest of this video. There's a lot of good information in there if you are new to using FL Studio. FL Studio has changed a little bit in how it resets, so just listen close, okay? So the new way is you can right click and you can see reset tracks to default. There's also reset track routing. Track routing is when you click around and you do stuff like this. Watch this. If I reset this piano, you're going to see that all the routing still stays. So you, if you want to reset that as well, you'd go reset routing there. Okay, now the actual insert is back to default. Now the old way to reset a mixer track was right clicking, going file, and then you would have a bunch of your presets in here. We would always just go default. All right, so that is how you reset plugins and how to uh, delete them as well. So for example, if I come here to this, you can click here and you can uh, delete a plugin. And if you want to reset multiple tracks, you just hold down control shift and click and you can see you can highlight them like this. You can also deselect them in the same way. All right. And then the same thing, you just right click and then either go reset uh, the track to default or reset, reset the routing. And again, the old school way was file and then default. All right. So let's hop into the tutorial. There's tons of good information in there. I hope you enjoy it. So to delete a plugin from the mixer insert, you just select whatever insert you want, you click the arrow, you go delete. I personally do not suggest enabling don't show in the future. And the reason is because previously in FL Studio, when you used to delete a plugin, it was gone. Like you were not able to undo to bring it back. Newer versions have introduced a better undo feature. So if you really wanted to, you could enable it. I personally suggest not to, and that's after years and years and years of using FL Studio but you just pressed OK and that plugin would be deleted. To reset a mixer insert, you simply just right click, you're going to go file and you just go default and that's it. All right. So if I just select that, you can see it goes back um, the routing. So any other uh, sounds that you've routed to the mixer still stay, but the actual mixer insert in terms of its plugins uh, are reset and the color and the name. However, if I select all of these and I come here, you'll see that I believe that stays. Okay, so all like the kind of routing stays. All right, so I just want to give you guys some best practices when it comes to the mixer, just to be really organized and have a really good workflow in FL Studio. Okay, so this is how I personally do it. And I hope it helps. So when we have our virtual instruments or one shot drum samples, I usually like to send each sound to its own mixer insert for the ultimate control. As you can see, this one here has insert eight and insert eight. In other words, you can see eights up here. Eight's also down here if I play it. So the, both of these two instruments are going to eight. This is very rare for me. The reason I did that is it's just a layer. Okay, if I play it, I'll mute uh, the one. So this, this, this is a harp and this is a piano. Okay, and like I said, so that is a layer. They're always playing at the same time together. So I mix them as a whole. If I really, really wanted to, I could bring a mixer insert over and you hold on alt and the left arrow to bring that over. And as you can see, I can now put this to nine if you wanted to wanted to do it this way. OK, or you can just right click and you go channel routing and there's control L. So you always want to learn some keyboard shortcuts, right? Also, if you were to color code first, so watch if I give this a color and then if I hit control L, it will give it its color. So that's why it's always nice to color code and get organized before you send stuff to the mixer. But depending on the track and your workflow and how things work out for that beat, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So I'm going to remove this separator and I'm just going to bring over another mixer insert and I'm just going to put the separator back. When it comes to a mixer insert, you can see that it's going to the master. But if you if you actually look on the insert right now on the output, there's none. So in other words, if we were to disable this from the master and I just solo this out, we do not hear it. OK, that is because it's not being sent out on the master one and two, which is the left channel and right channel. OK, and so if I now route that back, play hit play. Now we hear the piano. OK, so when we work with what's called a subgroup and I'll just go uh, sub subgroup. 
hit F2 just to give it a random color. Now, if I highlight both of them by holding on Control and Shift and clicking, you can right click and you can go route to this track only. If I look, if we look at the grand piano, you can see it's only going to the subgroup. It's no longer going to the master. If we come to Nexus, it is no longer going to the master. It's only going to the subgroup. At the very, very beginning of this tutorial, we saw that it was going both to eight. And in other words, I sent them both to one mixer insert. If I applied EQ, it affected both. And that was like the easiest way to do it because I knew that those two sounds were always playing together. I didn't want them separate. For example, we can come here, uh, come here, let's go, let's go clone, okay? And let's hit the, the minus on the number pad. I'll hit F2 and let's just go harp, okay? I always type, type uh, right in capitals. Harp is up top there, okay? You can also hit F2 to give it a random color. So there's harp, right? Um, but watch, I'm gonna remove the grand piano hit the plus on the number pad, and then watch, this is piano, and we will remo remove it from here. We'll just do this. So I could have done it like this, where we have two separate, but as you can see, um, this one's going to nine, and that's because it's not playing. So they're both, they're, now they're, they're, they're both going to be going to eight. Okay, but what's happening is now nine has all the effects Number 10 has no effects, so now it's not really like what we had. So what we could do is you could just click here, go save preset. You could drag them on individually. Um, I could have also right clicked this and went file and saved this mixer uh, state over. Okay, so we can do that and I'd have to relabel it. So I'd go like a uh, subgroup again and we can give it like uh, that color. Okay, and then we can right click and go separator. So again, let's click on 10. You can see it's going to eight. Number nine is going to eight. Let's just remove those effects. And so what I'm saying now is we come back to eight and this was essentially the same setup when I had both virtual instruments going to eight, right? At the very, very beginning of this tutorial. So for example, if I send it to 18 and I send this to 18, and if I were to put, let's just go effects on here. So if I were to put these effects, so I have two EQs, if I were to put them on here, you can see that this was super easy two virtual instruments going to one mixer insert. And that was in, in the case of this beat, that would have been the easiest choice. Okay. I just wanted to share how, yes, best practice is sending. Let's come back to Nexus. We'll put it back to nine and then we'll come to the grand piano and we'll put that back to 10. So now you can see 10 is going to a subgroup. Nine is going to a subgroup. And then we put our EQs on the subgroup, which means that it's affecting both of them. In this case, because I, originally had them where they were both playing in the same pattern, that was the easiest way. I just wanted to share with you that, yeah, you can separate them if you intend to play them at different times within the arrangement. Um, but yeah, so that was just a little bit of a ramble in terms of how to route your stuff around the mixer. But essentially, this tutorial was just showing you how to remove things from the mixer. You simply just click, go delete, go okay. Again, I don't suggest enabling that. If you want to reset a mixer insert, you can go file and then you just uh, go default. And you can also save your mixer states if you want to reload like EQs and, com and compressors. As you can see, uh, if I right click this one right here, uh, you can see that we have in file. Um, this is the one I have and it just allows me to load up an EQ and a compressor really, really quick. So let's just bring this over a little bit more. Okay. So this is how, how long it would take to open up an EQ and a compressor. So we're going to come here, we're going to go select, we're going to go EQ, open up an EQ, let it load, come here, select, dynamics, proceed. This takes, what, like 10 seconds, right? And that was like a waste of your time. So watch this. If I go file, boom. I have opened up an EQ and a compressor on one insert and we're good to go. All right, so if you guys have any questions about FL Studio, using the mixer, how to make beats, check out my website, itsgratuitous.com. If you would like to learn more about the mixer, check out my course, it's called FL Studio Mixer Workflow. And for a limited time, if you purchase my FL Studio template, you get that FL Studio Mixer Workflow course for free. All right, you guys can check all the links in the description. Again, check out itsgratuitous.com. I'm here to help. I also used uh, some Nexus, Flex, a lot of Flex, Nexus, right, we got our drums, and here comes the chorus here.
talk to you guys in the next FL Studio tutorial.